Well, the summer holidays are typically a time when we see young Australians using more illegal drugs. Sydney alone has experienced a massive drug bust in the past few weeks. Well, Johan Hari is the author of Chasing the Screen, and he says society is approaching the war on drugs the wrong way, and the solution is to build a sense of connection with drug users. One of my earliest memories is of trying to wake up one of my relatives and not being able to. I was too young then to understand why, but as I got older, I realised we had addiction in my family. And I think I believe for, for most of my life what I'm guessing most of your viewers think about addiction. You know, we think if we grabbed the first 20 viewers of your show off the street and we injected them all with, let's say, heroin for, for a month, at the end of that month, they'd all be heroin addicts for a simple reason. There are chemical hooks in heroin that their bodies would start to kind of desperately physically need, and at the end of that month, they'd have this ravenous hunger for it. That's what I, I thought I had seen in, in some of the people I love. The first thing that really alerted me to the fact there's something wrong with that story is when it was explained to me, in Britain or Canada, if you get hit by a truck in the street and you break your hip and you're taken to hospital... Uh, they'll, you, they'll give you a lot of a drug called diamorphine for the pain. Diamorphine is heroin. It's just the medical name for heroin. People are given it for quite long periods of time in hospitals. If any of your viewers have a Canadian or British uh, grandmother who's had a hip replacement operation, she's taken a lot of heroin. And if what we think about addiction is right, that it's caused by the chemical hooks, what should happen to all these people being given heroin in hospitals? A significant number of them should be becoming addicted. This has been studied very carefully. It doesn't happen. And when I learned that, it seemed so weird and so contrary to everything I'd been told. To be honest, I didn't believe it. And I only really began to understand it when I went and interviewed an extraordinary professor of psychology called Bruce Alexander, who's done an experiment that I think really changes how we think about addiction. He explained... The idea of addiction we've got in our heads, that it's caused by the drug, comes from a series of experiments that were done earlier in the 20th century. They're really simple. Your viewers can try them at home if they feel a bit sadistic. You take a rat and you put it in a cage and you give it two water bottles. One is just water and the other is water laced with either heroin or cocaine. If you do that, the rat will almost always prefer the drugged water and almost always kill itself within about a week. So there you go, right? That's our story. The drugs killed them. But in the 70s, Professor Alexander came along and said, well, hang on a minute. We put the rat alone in an empty cage where it's got nothing to do except use these drugs. What would happen if we did this differently? So he built a cage that he called Rat Park, which is basically heaven for rats. They've got loads of friends, they've got loads of cheese, they can have loads of sex, but everything a rat could want in life. And they've got both the water bottles, the normal water and the drug water. And of course, they tried both, they don't know what's in them. This is the fascinating thing. In Rat Park, they don't like the drugged water. They almost never use it. None of them ever use it compulsively. None of them ever overdose. So you have almost 100% compulsive use and overdose when, overdose when their lives are lousy and none when their lives are good. This has loads of human parallels I'm happy to talk about with you, but this tells us something really important. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. It's not the drug that is the primary problem. So when it comes to, for instance, uh, looking at the 100 years or so of the, the war on drugs that we've seen in um, Western society, uh, what do you understand as being the key motive behind that, um, given that we have in, in, in what you've discovered a misconception about drugs and addiction? I think it's partly, and you see this in Australia in the last few weeks with the claims about the, you know, there's been this big drug bust in, in Sydney. I think a lot of it, there are many reasons, and I go into them in the book, but I think one of the main ones is just a mistaken belief, and it's not an inherently evil or crazy thing to think, look, you've got these substances, they do harm some people, why don't we try to just get rid of these substances? Why don't we try to wipe them off the face of the earth? You can understand that idea isn't kind of inherently evil or illogical, but it has now been tried, right? For chasing the scream, you know, I went to over 30,000 miles, I went to countries that have tried every different approach. So, if that approach was going to work, the approach, let's try to just get rid of them, let's try to just wipe it off the earth, was going to work. It would have worked by now in the United States. They've been doing it for 100 years. They've spent a trillion dollars. They've put millions of people in prison. They've killed hundreds of thousands of people. And at the end of all that, they can't even keep drugs out of their prisons, which gives you some idea how well that works. After this massive drug bust that the police have been boasting about, I guarantee you there is nobody in Sydney tonight who wants to get hold of cocaine who can't get hold of cocaine. We've tried that way. We have genuinely given it a fair shot. And everywhere it has ever been tried, it has failed. It's not reduced addiction. 
It's not reduced drug use, and it has produced a whole wave of other disasters. For example, it transfers these substances to armed criminal gangs who commit a huge amount of violence. It's actually been a further wave of violence now in Sydney as rival criminal gangs fight for control of the patch of the people who've just been busted. So that's one way of looking at it. It's been tried. I've been there. I've seen the results. I've also been to the places that tried the exact opposite approach. I'll tell you about one of them, Portugal. In the year 2000, Portugal had one of the worst drug problems in Europe. 1% of the population was addicted to heroin, which is kind of extraordinary. And every year they tried the approach that your government is taking at the moment more. They arrested more people, they imprisoned more people, they shamed more people. And every year the problem got worse. And one day the prime minister and the leader of the opposition got together and basically said, we can't go on like this, what are we going to do? So they decided to set up a panel of scientists and doctors and they said to them, you guys go away figure out what would genuinely solve this problem, and we've agreed in advance we'll do whatever you recommend. So the panel went away, it looked at all the evidence, including the evidence from Rat Park that we were just talking about, and they came back and said, decriminalise all drugs, the whole lot, from cannabis to crack, but, and this is the crucial next step, take all the money we currently spend on screwing people's lives up, on arresting them, imprisoning them, shaming them, and spend it instead on turning their lives around. And interestingly, it's not really what we think of as rehab in Britain and Australia. So they do a bit of psychological support, they do a bit of, um, you know, residential rehab. But actually the biggest thing they did was a huge job creation program. For everyone who had an addiction problem, say you used to be a mechanic, they'd go to a garage and they'll say, if you employ this guy for a year, we'll pay half his wages. The, the goal was that they had a huge program of loans so addicts could sit up and run small businesses with support that they, they ran themselves. The goal was to say to every addict in Portugal, we love you, we value you, we're on your side, we want you back. And by the time I went to Portugal, the results were in. It was 13 years, it's now 15 years. It was 13 years then since, since they'd begun this experiment. Injecting drug use was down by 50%, 5-0%. Overdose deaths were massively down. Street crime was massively down. One of the net ways you know it works so well is that almost nobody wants to go back. Well, that is Johan Hari, journalist and author of Chasing Scream, clearly very passionate about the issue. It's sure to be a huge conversation that we will continue to have.